Hi, and welcome back. In the previous section, we covered using basic rulers, some more specialized rulers, and using the stream and saturated line tools. In this section, we're going to cover using perspective rulers. Clip Studio Paint has one, two, and three point perspective rulers to aid you in drawing your scenes. These perspective rulers are cool, and they're really powerful once you get the hang of setting them up. In fact, when I first saw a demonstration of them years ago is when I decided that I had to have this program, back when it was called Mung Studio 4. However, these rulers will not replace knowledge and practice in drawing perspective. If you don't know the principles of drawing in correct perspective, then these rulers will only aid you so much. A great resource for drawing in perspective is a book called Vanishing Point Perspective for Comics by Jason Cheeseman Meyer. This book is full of tips and tricks and will help you understand perspective. The first video in this section will cover the one-point perspective ruler. In this video, we are going to sketch out a one-point perspective scene and then create a ruler that will help us flesh it all out in perfect perspective. Let's get started. To start off with, we need a canvas to draw on. I'm using an A4 size canvas at 350 dpi, but you can use whatever feels most comfortable to you. To start off, let's make a sketch of the scene we're going to draw. This is where a good base knowledge of perspective comes into play. For this one point exercise, let's do the most basic of all perspective exercises, the road disappearing out to the horizon. We'll have some buildings on this side of the road. So I just rough everything in loosely. We're laying out a guide so that we know where to place our ruler in a moment. Once we have our basic layout done, we can make our perspective ruler. So let's go to Layer, Ruler Frame, Create Perspective Ruler. You can see that this box is where we'll select which type of perspective ruler we want to create. I always leave the Create New Layer box checked as well so I have a new layer to work on with my ruler. So we'll leave this on one point and we'll click on OK. So now we have this horizontal line, this is our horizon line, a vertical line, and two lines radiating out from the center. Where these lines meet is the vanishing point. When the perspective ruler was created, the object operation tool should have automatically been selected for you. We'll click on this ruler so that we can look at some of the options we have, and so we can move this ruler into the position we need it to be. First, let's talk about the horizon line. We've clicked on the ruler to make it our active selection, and now we can see a bunch of handles. By clicking on this green square, we can move the ruler around and set the horizon line where we want it to be in our drawing. Also, by using the little cross-shaped handles on the horizon line, we can rotate the line of this ruler. So you can have the horizon at an angle instead of being perfectly horizontal. So if you have a shot in your comic or illustration where the horizon isn't straight across, this is very handy. Let's say we did that and we actually want a perfectly straight horizon line instead of an angle. We can right click on the horizon line on the PC and choose the horizontalize eye level option from the menu that appears. This will move our line back to being a straight, flat horizon line. So once we have the horizon line where we want it, we can move the vanishing point as well. The vanishing point in my sketch is pretty centered, but if yours isn't, click on the blue circle and you can move the vanishing point to wherever you need it to be. You may notice that the horizon line is moving around as well as we move the vanishing point. This can be stopped by right clicking on the ruler and then checking the fix eye level option. This will lock the position of the horizon line when the vanishing point is being moved. Now once I have the vanishing point where I need it, I like to move the guidelines, which are these two lines that are radiating out from the vanishing point. I use these and line them up roughly with the important lines in my sketch, so that I can be sure I have the vanishing point and horizon line exactly where I want them. You can see here that I've positioned these guidelines along the side of the road and along the front of these buildings. Also, we can add more guides to a vanishing point if needed. First select the vanishing point, then right click, and select add guide from the menu. As you can see when we right click, we can also add a vanishing point or delete a vanishing point. 
Perspective rulers really can be quite flexible, and this option has saved me a lot of work in the past when I've suddenly realized what I needed was actually a two-point perspective ruler instead of a one-point. The ability to add vanishing points on the fly means not having to make an entire ruler again from scratch. Another option you'll notice in our list of options for the vanishing point is the option to fix the vanishing point. This locks the point in place so that it can't be moved again until unlocked. Now that we have the perspective ruler adjusted the way we need it, we can start using it to draw. Select a drawing tool, and then ensure that the Snap to Special Ruler option in the command bar is turned on. Each of our lines will snap to the perspective ruler. As we draw, each of our lines will snap to the perspective ruler. It will allow us to draw lines parallel to the horizon line, such as this, lines that radiate back towards the vanishing point, such as the sides of our road, and vertical lines. Also, we can use the direct draw tools and have them snap to the perspective ruler. So, if we want to draw the side of a building quickly, we can select the rectangle direct draw tool and drag it out. It will automatically adjust to the vanishing point of this ruler. Once you have your sketch done, you may want to ink your scene. Let's make a new layer we can ink on. Now, when you created your new layer, your perspective ruler may not have been visible when you selected the new layer. Don't panic. If this happens, go back to the layer with the ruler linked to it. Here in the Layers palette, there is an icon for Set Showing Area of Ruler. Click on it to open the options. The Active option is usually Show Only When Editing Target, which means the ruler will only show when the ruler's layer is active. Or we can set it to Show In All Layers, meaning it will be visible and usable in all layers. Or we have the option to Show Only When In the Same Folder. So if you had a folder with your layers in it, then you would see this ruler so long as you were editing a layer in that same folder with this option on. Now we're on a layer above the layer we drew our sketch on, and we can start inking our background. As you can see, the lines will snap to our existing perspective ruler, but our ink lines are on a new layer. This drawing here is one example of the type of scene possible with a one-point perspective ruler and some patience. In this video, we have learned about using the one-point perspective ruler and some of the options that are available in all of the perspective rulers we're going to cover in this section.